optimize your brain with mindfulness. In order to stay competitive in today's fast-paced business environment, we have to make faster, more intelligent decisions than any of our competitors. And one of the ways many of the world's top business leaders do this is through what is known as mindfulness. In the article, How to Optimize Your Brain to Make More Money, you see that Einstein was not born with his brain, he built it through what we now know as neuroplasticity. We have power over our brains by repeated thought, thus building thicker and thicker neurological connections, building up the muscles of our brain that we use to outperform our competitors. In the following clip, Ray Dalio, who runs the largest hedge fund in the world, in his Inside Quest interview, talks about the benefits of mindfulness. To use in a second, but were you already meditating by this point? Yeah. And do you think that meditation gave you the ability to get out from under the control of your emotions? Yes. Meditation was fantastic. Meditation is the biggest gift that I can give anyone. And I would say more than anything, it is whatever reason for success I've had. Uh, because it allows one, on, back to the two U's, I'll clarify. What I mean is that in your mind, there, we think, what do you want? And the reality is, when you look at the neuroscience and psychology, that there are different parts of your brain that want different things. And so, in the simplest sense, there is the logical part of your brain that you're conscious of, it's called the conscious, and you think you're being logical and you want to make those decisions. And then there's the subliminal, below the limbic system, part of the brain, which is the emotional, and it's not as conscious to you, but it has more of an influence on you than really the logical one. And so they're not aligned. And so when you're experiencing that pain or let's say the ego, right, there were two main things. You got an ego barrier and a blind spot barrier. If you can get past your ego barrier and you get past your blind spot barrier, you can accomplish anything because you also know that you don't have to do everything, to, you don't have to figure it out yourself. You can take in from other people the different ways to approach things in the best possible way. And so the realization that we all are really struggling with ourselves and to think which, are, which is in control. Meditation helps to deal with the alignment of those two things because both are valuable. In other words, intuition, imagination, the things we really love come from our subliminal us's, right? Our needs, whatever they may be. They come from here, that subliminal. They may be valuable. They may be scare damaging. You don't know the difference. And so when they come up and you're looking at those with your logical mind and you can align those things, you're probably in good shape. If you can do that, that alignment between the subliminal and the logical, and you can do that with other people so that you can triangulate with other people and say, does that make sense? Or, and get alignment. That alignment is the path to the future because you only have to know what the best things to do are. You don't have to have them all come up from your head. And for God's sakes, don't be overly opinionated because just because you have that opinion, it doesn't mean it's true. Jerry Seinfeld has been practicing mindfulness for 40 years. And he believes mindfulness is like a cell phone charger for your brain, thus recharging your brain. Mindfulness is a form of meditation. However, many people resist the idea of meditation because it's too hippie-ish, too woo-woo, or they feel it's connected to some religious practice. Yes, there are certain types of meditation that are part of their religious practices, but meditation and especially mindfulness meditation by itself does not. The meaning of mindfulness is to be in the moment, which is why so many business leaders practice mindfulness. Stress and worry are destructive and cause our brain to underperform. Neuroscientists show that we have between 50 to 60,000 thoughts each and every day and with 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts that you had the day before. Isaiah 43:18 says, 
Do not remember the former things and do not dwell on the past. Look, I'm doing something new. So you have to stop thinking those same old negative thoughts and replace them with positive thoughts. People say they want to change their life. However, they surround themselves with feelings that are familiar to them. And when they are on the brink of change, they slip back into their same old destructive habits because it is familiar to them. We end up self-sabotaging ourselves because it's familiar. People believe they are not in control of their emotions. However, thought alone can change the way you feel, whether real or imagined. People want a new life. However, instead of creating a vision in their mind for their future, they feel unworthy because they focus on negativity, which sabotages their future. People wait for their life to change for them to feel happy and successful. 2 Corinthians advises us to bring every thought into captivity. In other words, not to let our mind wander, because if you do not learn how to take control of your brain, someone else will control what you think about. It is almost impossible to go from thinking negatively to thinking positively. You need to stop the momentum of your thoughts. This is why mindfulness is so important. Mindfulness is a tool to train your mind how to think. Chances are you have lived your entire life letting society, advertisers, and the media control your thinking. It is now time for you to learn how to control your thoughts. In order to turn off the busyness of your mind and the chatter, you will want to see our YouTube video that we posted entitled Meditation for Beginners. Many meditation teachers will start you out by focusing on the air coming in and out of your nose to turn off the chatter. This is the place where you will not worry about your stress and problems. You are in the moment. You are also not worrying about the future. Most people's minds live in the past or in the future. However, the world's most successful people live in the moment. They have a job to do and they don't have time to worry or stress about it. Once you turn off the chatter and your negative thinking, you can then focus on positive thoughts. Andrew Carnegie, the Steel King, who was once the richest person in the world, whose dying wish was to give ordinary people access to the secret knowledge of wealth, which many of you know as Napoleon Hill's classic, Think and Grow Rich. But as you see in the article, the Medici Code. Napoleon Hill did not finish his writings until after Andrew Carnegie's death, in which Henry Ford felt that Napoleon Hill's writings revealed too many secrets and released it as the simplified version, Think and Grow Rich. However, Napoleon Hill's original release was a correspondence course through mail order entitled The Laws of Success. Andrew Carnegie learned how to control his mind through one of his early mentors, Charles Hanel, who offered a correspondence course and a mastermind session where a group of elite businessmen would meet together, paying a two-year salary to be mentored by Charles Hanel. Charles Hanel wanted to open up this opportunity to anyone who was willing to commit to it. However, those in power were threatened by these secrets that made his writings illegal, fearing that anyone could learn these secrets and take away their position. However, after his death in 1949, all but a small group of elite entrepreneurs forgot about Charles Hanel. In 2017, I was invited to attend a very secret and elite group of leaders, where a whole new world of opportunity was opened up to me, where I learned of the writings of Charles Hanel. I want to invite you to come along with me on this journey of what I'm learning from the past writings of Charles Hanel to control my mind through a series of stages.